So we are going to talk about heating curves, okay? Just the basic idea of them, what they are. Let's figure that out. Um, how to identify the different parts of a heating curve. And then the two main equations that we use with heating curves, okay? Um, so they're pretty basic. So a heating curve is just a graph that shows temperature on your y-axis and time on your x-axis. And, and really all it's showing us is stuff heating up, okay? It's a heating curve. This is not super complex, so don't be scared, okay? Just always remember temperature for your heating curve is in Celsius, okay? Fahrenheit is garbage in chemistry, womp womp, okay? So everything's in Celsius. And uh, a really easy example of this would be um, something you'd want to heat up, okay? So let's say uh, you take ice, I drew you some beautiful pictures here, okay? You take an ice cube out of the freezer and you're going to boil it. You're going to boil some water. I don't know why you would want to boil ice, but roll with, roll with me here, okay? So I put my ice cube into a pot on the stove, okay? Initially, what happens to that ice cube is that the ice cube just starts to heat up, right? It's not in the freezer anymore. It's going to heat up. So that ice cube went from whatever uh, you know, degree my, my freezer was at, and it's going to start heating up, okay? So during this part of a heating curve is when whatever substance I'm dealing with, typically it's water, just because water is a really easy thing to kind of visualize. Um, we've all seen ice, we've all seen water boil, so we go through the stages of water together, very exciting, okay? But th this first step of a heating curve is always when your substance is a solid, okay? And that solid is just heating up until it hits this point right here, which would be its melting point. Okay, so for water, the melting point of water is zero degrees Celsius, okay? So my, my ice cube is heating up, heating up, heating up, Nothing is changing. It's still solid ice throughout this whole process of the ice cube heating up until, boom, it hits right here, the melting point. And then my ice cube starts melting. Okay, again, the beautiful pictures that I've drawn for you. All right, so when my ice cube actually starts melting, okay, I have both now a solid and a liquid at the same time, right? Because my ice cube doesn't just melt like in an instant, okay? It actually takes time to melt the ice cube, okay? So my temperature doesn't increase during this phase change, okay? While it's changing from a solid to a liquid, your heating curve flatlines, plateaus, okay? It stays flat. And this whole process right here is going from a solid to a liquid. It's melting easy. Okay. So ice cube was a total solid, solid, solid up until this point right here, melting point. Then I start getting both a solid and a liquid throughout this whole process, right? This whole phase change until I hit this point right here. And at that point, everything has melted. Okay. My whole solid is no longer a solid anymore. The entire thing has melted into water, liquid water, okay? So now I'm completely 100% a liquid at this point. And let's say I turn on the stove to heat up my water, okay? So the water is going to heat up, okay? And that means that it's going to actually go up in temperature again. Very exciting, okay? I'd also wanna like put a little lid on the pot to keep all of the water inside the pot. You want a closed container, right? You don't want any of your liquid or eventually we're gonna turn this into a water vapor. You don't want that escaping out. You wanna keep it into a closed container, okay? So during this stage right here, everything is a liquid, okay? Just the liquid is heating up until 
I hit this point right here. Eventually the liquid's going to get so hot that it's going to hit its boiling point. Very exciting. And I'm going to plateau again. I'm going to flatline again because now my liquid water is changing into water vapor. It's not just a beautiful picture for you guys. Okay, so flat lines again. All right. And I have another phase change, right? I'm phase changing again. I'm going from a liquid to a gas. I'm boiling. Okay, so at this point right here, everything is a liquid. Then I'm starting to boil. So I have both a liquid and a gas. And boom, I get to this point, And now everything has boiled. Boiling is over. I'm now 100% a gas. Which is hard to draw. So imagine, you know, you got a bunch of water vapor in there. Okay, so now I'm 100% a gas at this point, but I can still heat up that gas. So if I was still increasing the temperature, still increasing the heat, right? Turn, you know, turning the stove on, that temperature would still increase. So the temperature now of just your gas would also still increase. This would be a gas. Okay. So main idea of a heating curve is just that it shows you phase changes, right? It shows you, I'm going to take away this gorgeous picture. I don't know. We're all sad about it. Okay. It shows you going from a solid up to the melting point. Then it shows you melting. Then it shows you liquid heating up to the boiling point. Then it shows you boiling. And then it shows you whatever vapor or gas you've created is, you've created, okay, is heating up again. That's it, okay? Uh, other things, right. This stage right here, moving from a solid to a liquid, we typically call it melting in, you know, like real life, we say like the ice cube melted or something. Um, but you will also be using a word called fusion. Okay, so you'll be talking about the delta H of fusion. Don't let it scare you, just it, it's another word meaning the same step. Okay, you're moving between a solid and a liquid when you're talking about fusion. Okay, liquid to gas, same thing. We typically will talk about this in terms of boiling, like in real life. Okay, but the other like neat sciencey word that we'll use is vaporization. And that one's a little bit easier to, to think about because you can think of like vapor, like water vapor, a gas. Okay, so this stage right here, vaporization, this stage right here, fusion. So far, hopefully good. The one last thing, okay, is which equations you use during which parts of your graph. Two main equations for heating curves. The, the first one is easy and we've all used it before, hopefully. Okay, Q equals MCAT. And, you know, Q is your heat in joules. M is the mass in grams. C is your specific heat. And those units kind of look like they're terrible, but they're really not that bad, especially when you do the math in the problem, everything cancels out and works really nicely. But that's joules per gram degrees Celsius. And then delta T is, you know, like a couple, the delta T goes together. That, that delta in science means change. So this is a change in temp, and that's always gonna be in degrees Celsius. Okay, so you use Q equals MCAT anytime there is an actual change in temperature. Okay, the, honestly, the number one mistake that is made during heating curve questions is that students will just use the wrong equation. They'll try and use Q equals MCAT for every step of a heating curve, and you can't do that. You can only use Q equals MCAT, the delta T, when there is an actual change in temperature. There are two parts of a heating curve where there's no change in temperature, right? Where it flatlines. You cannot use Q equals MCAT here. You only use Q equals MCAT just when it's the solid itself heating up. Just when it's the liquid itself heating up. 
and just when it's the gas heating up. Okay, so only during this part of a heating curve, or these three parts of a heating curve, do you actually use Q equals M cat. There is another equation now that we all get to learn, which is Q equals mole delta H. Okay, and this is still heat. Q is still heat. The, the trick though, you gotta be careful. This is now in kilojoules, okay? Q equals MCAT, your Q is in joules. Q equals mole delta H, your Q is in kilojoules. So just be careful, make sure you're paying attention to which one is which, and you gotta make sure you know how to convert between joules and kilojoules. All right, enough said. So moles is moles, and it's in the units of moles. So that one's easy. Okay, um, not too difficult there. The, the Really the only difficult thing you gotta make sure you know how to do is convert between mass in grams and convert between an amount in moles. Okay, so you have to make sure you know how to use molar mass going between grams and mole. And then delta H, okay, that's gonna be a change in enthalpy. And don't freak out about that at all. You will typically be given, you know, a table like this or some kind of given values, some kind of known values. So you don't have to memorize these, right? So it'll tell you the delta H of vaporization is this for water. The delta H of fusion is this for water. And typically you'll be given the same thing with like specific heats, right? So that's the C in your Q equals MCAT. You don't have to memorize these numbers, right? So it'll tell you in a table what the values are for a specific heat. It'll tell you in a table what your delta H values are for whatever you're dealing with. Again, typically it's water when we're talking about a heating curve, okay? But your delta H's are always in kilojoules per mole, okay? And you use this lovely equation during any time you're going through a phase change, okay? So anytime I'm moving from a solid to a liquid, I use Q equals mole delta H, liquid to gas, Q equals mole delta H, okay? I never use mole delta H when there's an actual change in temperature. I never use Q equals MCAT when there is no change in temperature, okay? So just make sure that you know, number one, how to look at a heating curve and identify, you know, if someone asked you like, at what point, uh, does the liquid start boiling? You should be able to say, boom, right there, right? Right here is where the liquid starts boiling. Where is, uh, you know, the part in the heating curve when it's just a gas? You should be able to identify all of the parts of a heating curve. If someone asked you, um, you know, what equation would you use for this step? You should be able to say you'd use Q equals mole delta H. If they asked you why, you should be able to say, because there's a phase change, because I'm switching from a solid to a liquid, because there is no change in temperature. I think that's it, all right? So again, just the basics of a heating curve. What is it? What are the different parts? What two equations do we use? I can't believe this is 14 minutes. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, good luck.